Okay. All right, so two people squared off, staring intently into each other's eyes, ready to prove a point. Facts and claims of misrepresentation filled the space between them. Stated opinions and arguments just short of a dissertation in length are made. Rebuttals are shouted. As the debate goes on, both parties feel that they have proven their point and perhaps even won the debate. The feeling of victory, it's in the air. They go their separate ways and they wait for the next chance to face off. They will barely speak to each other from now until the next debate. Both will say that the other was rude and didn't listen. They will feel that their points were never taken into consideration. You see, but then it will happen. Both will prepare themselves for the night and then they will get underneath the same blanket. Hmm. Yes, you see, this, this debate wasn't amongst politicians. It was between a husband and wife inside of the home. It was between a family and friends. You see, these debates happen in person and on social media amongst people who call themselves friends. So many times, husbands and wives line up across from each other and then convince and, and proven points and throwing accusations and pointing the finger. Friends become specialists in criticizing the opinions that differ from their own. Hurtful things can be said during these times of debate and one of them often walk away with emotions of anger and frustration and sadness and hurt. They become convinced that they have been unheard. You see, a debate may have been won, but a conversation is at loss. You know, in politics and on debate teams, when a debate earns you points, but in life you lose friends, or even worse, you lose the intimacy of your spouse. The next time you're ready to talk to a loved one about an opinion on something, can I encourage you to do it from the framework of these next verses that I would love to read to you. You see, the first one comes from James 1.19, and it says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Next one I'll go to is Proverbs 18, verse 2, and it says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only expressing his own opinion. The next one comes from Proverbs 18, 13, and it says, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame. And the last one is Proverbs 12, 15, and it says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. You see, here's the thing, guys. We all have opinions, and some of them are stronger than others. In what way... Can you, as you live this week, begin to think of humbling yourself and hearing the opinion of the family and friends and the spouse? How can you increase in conversation and decrease in debating? How can you draw people to you rather than repelling them away? How can you love and have gentleness and allow these verses to guide you in your conversations this week? Can you seek to listen and hear more than you speak and shout? Listen and gain a friend, even if you have a difference of opinion. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that we could do more listening and less debating. Lord, that we won't try to win debates while at the, at the hand of losing friends and repelling those who we love. Lord, help us to recognize that having a difference of opinion is okay to have because we're two different individuals and opinions don't have to separate, but they can be fruitful and enriching. And so, Lord, help us and forgive us of the times, Lord, where we have been so strong-headed that we have been willing to crush and push down people who are feeling broken and hurt during this time of life where there's so much that's going on and Truth be told, we could use a friend. So Lord, help us. Help us to do better. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friends, family, come on now. We can do more listening, more hearing, more loving, and less debating. God bless. Have a beautiful day.